Welcome to this session of organizational behavior. In today's session, we will talk about leadership. The primary objectives of this lesson today is to talk about the definition of leadership and we will co contrast and compare between leadership and management. Uh, we will be looking into different theories um, to identify and uh, define leadership and how uh, the different theories have worked on um, training uh, and uh, developing human resources um, towards um, leadership and then we'll be also looking into ethics in leadership we will be uh, also focusing on the difference um, and uh, ideas b uh, behind um, the charismatic and transfor uh, transformational leadership and at the end we'll be looking into uh, the challenges and effectiveness of leadership in different scenarios uh, outside any kind of uh, ideal work environment according to the book um, leadership is the ability to influence a group toward, uh, toward achieving a common vision or a set of goals and what we need to understand there is uh, always a difference between leaders and managers at the same time leadership is not always about formal uh, role to inspire people to influence people there can be also non-sanctioned leadership that uh, can sprout in outside the formal uh, organizational structure and that can have uh, much more uh, higher influence uh, over uh, the workforce or over the people. The book uh, talks about strong leadership, effective leadership and also uh, its um, comparison with the strong management. Uh, according um, to the book we see that uh, we find leaders uh, who are the people who are challenging the status quo, uh, who has uh, the vision of the future, how to grow how to strategize um, and how to grow together and that and he or she has the inspirational capability uh, to mold and transform people to achieve such objectives uh, to uh, implement the strategies uh, he or she comes up with uh, on the other hand managers are the ones uh, who are responsible to formulate detailed plans uh, of such visions and uh, they're also responsible to create efficient organizational structures and more so involved in uh, overseeing day-to-day uh, -day operations and activities so in many cases managers um, are working uh, under the purview of leaders and kind of implementing their ideas visions and uh, strategies um, that in many cases happen the book talks about uh, different theories uh, that uh, focuses on uh, identifying the personal qualities and characteristics of the leaders. Uh, so this uh, and these trait theories, this is uh, one of the earlier work in the industry and uh, in academia. So the trait theories uh, look for uh, the personality, uh, the social, physical, or intellectual attributes that uh, can differentiate leaders from the non-leaders. Um, and uh, that was the main goal of those theories. But what we have seen that uh, in late 1960s, there has been uh, um, evaluation of the 20 different studies. And eventually, uh, in the later part, in the 90s also, there has been a lot of numerous studies and analysis. But what the problem was, uh, the researchers um, realized that, of course, there are certain traits uh, uh, and behavioral patterns within people uh, who become leaders. Uh, and, uh, and definitely, they are different than the other common people who are in the workforce. But people were facing the dead end uh, without uh, identifying successfully what were those uh, personality traits or differences between uh, these two groups. And that thing totally changed 
that dead end was solved and we came up to know better about people's uh, different personalities, values, um, and uh, difference between the leaders and non-leaders with the introduction of uh, Big Five personality framework. We talked in details about it in Chapter 5, and um, eventually what we have seen is most of the dozens of traits uh, of uh, various uh, leadership studies that we have uh, found before, most of them could be summarized uh, under the this Big Five personality framework so definitely that was a huge uh, breakthrough even though there has been some confusions uh, with uh, the specific uh, ideas and outcomes of uh, the trait approach uh, towards uh, uh, trait uh, theories of leadership but certainly it helped us to identify uh, who are the good leaders uh, uh, we using those theories we could see that uh, good leaders are the people who are being liked uh, by the people around them, uh, who has the ability to assert themselves, uh, and uh, who are also uh, have a higher moral uh, attitude towards uh, different issues and who are creative and flexible uh, towards different scenarios, towards the problems and challenges, um, and they are proactive. So those are the things and traits uh, we understood from the theories uh, presented um, in the past. The other trait theory that, was that has been very effective is the emotional intelligence uh, in order to identify effective leadership. We talked in details about EI uh, in chapter 4 that deals with emotions and moods and uh, there we have seen that a person uh, who has a very good analytical mind good uh, compelling vision and also a lot of terrific ideas those combinations are only effective when those people also have higher emotional intelligence and definitely uh, those people th who have higher EI need to empathize with the pupils around them the uh, they should have better understanding about the strengths weaknesses uh, about the people uh, in his or her team his or her organization and also about the chances and opportunities challenges and the problems that uh, in in the surroundings where he or she is working or at the organization that he or she is leading so higher EI definitely uh, is a good indication of uh, better leadership, effective leadership. In conclusion of those uh, trade theories uh, based on the latest findings, what we have seen that uh, definitely there are trades that can predict leadership. And uh, what we also be careful uh, to uh, identify here, uh, that uh, traits do a better job in predicting the emergence of leaders and the appearance of leadership but uh, in many cases it falls short uh, these trait theories fall short of uh, distinguishing uh, distinguishing between uh, effective and ineffective leaders so we really need to be careful of where we are um, applying these trait theories So when we talk about um, identifying effective and ineffective uh, leaders and we talk about uh, training leaders, we talk about development of uh, leadership qualities, this is where uh, the different, uh, uh, different uh, applications of behavioral uh, theories of leadership comes. Uh, the most comprehensive theories uh, uh, in this uh, group uh, actually was resulted in from the Wahio State Studies uh, which started in late 1940s. Uh, that uh, work uh, sought to identify uh, the independent dimensions of leader behavior. Uh, and uh, in the beginning there has been thousands of dimensions but eventually the researchers uh, were successful to narrow down into two major uh, 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 behaviors that accounted for uh, most leadership uh, most leaderships the first one is the initiating structure um, and 
it talks about uh, uh, is the extent to which a leader is likely to define and organize his or her role and those of uh, the employees working under him or her uh, in the search for goal attainment so there are certain particular goals strategies uh, vision and mission uh, and to achieve to attain and there is a structure initiated by the leader in order to do that uh, the other one uh, is the consideration and here it, it talks about the extent to which a uh, uh, person's job relationship are, are characterized by mutual trust um, and here the leaders have respect for uh, his or her employees ideas and definitely uh, she has the leader has empathy towards uh, um, their feelings and uh, she is flexible uh, she is receptive to different ideas and then um, she can challenge uh, the status quo and go beyond so this is the difference uh, between uh, the two patterns uh, the two uh, behaviors that that's th that st stood out uh, from uh, these uh, behavioral theories of leadership then we also saw university of michigan's uh, theory uh, in leadership uh, that the one is the employee oriented leaders uh, that empathize uh, emphasize uh, that who has the first and foremost uh, emphasis uh, on the interpersonal relationship and then we also see the production oriented leader who are talking about the jobs that need to be done who are focusing on the tasks at hand so we see the production oriented uh, leaders are more or less uh, related to the initiating structure and the employee oriented leaders are more or less uh, um, related to the consideration so we see the similarity the other study the globe study and we keep uh, talking and citing this study in different sessions of organizational behavior that th that has very important studies uh, in ob um, so here th the globe study suggests that uh, uh, there are international differences there when we are talking about implementing this initiating structure and consideration in different cultural context we will see um, things are not um, uh, like happening in the way we expect all the time um, in uh, different places uh, for example the book talks about the expectations of the Brazilian employees uh, who, who expect that if a ma US uh, a manager from US comes to lead a team in Brazil uh, he or she needs to be uh, team oriented participative humane um, so uh, it definitely sh uh, she has to have the respect for the culture uh, and higher consideration of the local uh, uh, customs and uh, different uh, so uh, socio-political nuances so what we see that um, this uh, initiating structure and considerations may also need to be flexible according to the demand of the surroundings and the demand of the workforces uh, and so on in summary if we look into the trait theories and the behavioral theories what we can definitely with confidence say that leaders who have um, certain traits and who display consideration and structured behaviors uh, uh, towards achieving certain goals so, uh, surely has a higher chance of being more effective uh, but at the same time we also need to understand that even with all these uh, behavioral uh, traits and uh, and uh, processes uh, the leaders may not be successful his or her organization may not be successful because uh, there can be different context and certainly those matters and then there are uh, there's and context uh, with different context comes different situational variables that definitely need to be kept in mind and in the next uh, several slides we will be expanding on such um, situational variables and the theories how to um, that define and deal with leadership in different situations the first one we talk about uh, in in order to assess cont uh, uh, contingency theories of leadership 
um, uh, by the different level of support is the uh, Fiddler contingency model. So these are all related to the situation, different situational variables that we just talked about in the previous slides. Uh, so the first step, the first thing that the, uh, in the Fiddler uh, contingency model is to identify the leadership style. The researcher believed that uh, the key factor in leadership success is uh, any individual's basic leadership style. So what he created is uh, it's a very interesting one. Um, he created this uh, least preferred co-worker or LPC questionnaire and um, he, he wanted to measure whether a person uh, is uh, uh, in task or uh, whether a person is, person is task or relationship oriented. Uh, so that questionnaire actually uh, contained uh, 16 um, contrasting adjectives. Um, for example, as uh, the pleasant, unpleasant, efficient, inefficient, open, garden, and so on. And what he did, he asked uh, different respondents to describe the one person they, uh, they least enjoyed working with by uh, rating him or her on a scale of 1 to 8 for each of these 16 sets of contrasting adjectives. Um, and Fiddler believed um, through doing that, uh, based on um, the respondent's answer to the questionnaire, um, he has the ability to determine the basic, uh, their, their basic, the respondent's basic leadership style. So F uh, Fiddler uh, model here assumes that the underlying assumption here is that an individual's leadership style is fixed. Uh, and because of that, there are other continuous theories in addition to LPC theory. The first one uh, the book talks about uh, in addition to LPC is uh, the situational leadership theory or SLT uh, and it uh, focuses on the followers. This theory proposes uh, that successful leadership is achieved by selecting the right leadership style um, which is dependent on the level of followers readiness. Here, um, the researchers, uh, by the term readiness, refer to the, to the extent to which people have the ability and willingness to accomplish a specific task in hand. The, uh, this theory assumes that the leadership, uh, a leader should choose one of the four behaviors depending on uh, follower readiness. Uh, and that's very important if the followers are unable and unwilling to do a task and we are talking about a uh, uh, situation where in the team the team members are not willing to follow the leaders then the leader needs to give clear and specific directions um, but if the followers are unable but uh, so they don't have the quality but they're willing then the leader definitely should change the strategy and need to uh, display high task orientation to compensate or balance for uh, the followers um, lack of ability uh, and uh, high uh, relationship orientation to, uh, so that to get them buy into this uh, to the leader's desire so that's important now if uh, our followers are able but unwilling uh, we are talking about some smart uh, followers, some smart, smart workforces who are not willing to work, who are not motivated. Then uh, the leader, um, according to this theory, needs to use um, a supportive uh, and uh, participative style of uh, leadership. And um, if in an ideal scenario, if uh, we are talking about workforce who are uh, or the followers who are both able and willing, uh, then definitely uh, the, the leader just need to guide them and they will do the rest. Uh, then the book talks about path goal theory uh, developed by Robert Howes. It's uh, actually one of the most respected approaches to leadership. Uh, according to path goal theory, whether a leader should be directive or supportive or he or she should dem demonstrate some other behavior um, depends on uh, the complex analysis of the situation. Um, 
this path goal theory predicts uh, that the directive leadership uh, can yield greater satisfaction when tasks are ambiguous or stressful um, uh, than uh, in com uh, than when um, they are highly structured and well laid out. Uh, while supportive leadership results in high performance and satisfaction uh, when employees are performing structured tasks. Uh, the theory says, uh, the path goal theory says, that the directive leadership is uh, most likely to be perceived as uh, redundant among employees who has a higher ability uh, or considerable experience the same group of people with high ability that we talked about in the previous slide um, uh, when we were explaining SLT. Um, so in addition to this, um, these theories, there is another uh, continuity theory that the book talks about, which is the leadership uh, leader participation model that argues uh, that the way the leader makes decision um, is as important as uh, what uh, he or she decides on um, and that model is uh, developed by Victor Room and Philip Yetam. Um, we can see more on this uh, in the book chapter. In addition to different contingency theories, the book also talks about the practical side of it. Uh, what are the different dimensions, different chemistries between leader and uh, the followers and leaders and the people who are working under the leader in the organizations. So LMX or leader membership exchange theory is one of those. Uh, here this theory uh, argues that because of time pressures, um, leaders um, st usually establish um, uh, establishes a special relationship with a small group of their followers. And these individuals uh, make up this in-group uh, who, who are more trusted. And in many cases, they get a disproportionate amount of leaders' attention. And mm. they are more likely to receive uh, special privileges. And what the theory also uh, proposes uh, implies that the leader implicitly categorizes these followers as in and the others as out and that's how um, the interaction um, works uh, and also that can have some impact on the total production side or the way the productivity happens within the organizations. Uh, so there has been uh, different uh, tests uh, and researches happened uh, to, to see whether or not uh, LMX theory stands or work and uh, more or less it has been supportive. Uh, uh, there are uh, different uh, examples where uh, disparities, are, uh, disparities have been um, um, uh, observed uh, in the workplace between different groups of uh, workers, different groups of um, uh, uh, human resources um, and their relative uh, proximity uh, with uh, the corresponding leaders. Beyond the different issues or problems or different uh, challenges and dimensions of interactions between workforces and the leaders, uh, that also pushes us to the conversation of uh, um, a successful leader. And when we talk about a successful leader, uh, a big part of the chapter talks about charismatic leaders. So what, are, what do we mean by charismatic leaders? So what are the key characteristics of uh, him or her? Um, according, to the, according to the book, as it uh, summarized, as it's being summarized in this exhibit 12.3, this uh, one who is a charismatic leader certainly has uh, the vision uh, of about the organization, about the bigger staff, and he or she is uh, can effectively articulate th that vision uh, and the sense of purpose uh, among the people who are going to be working with them. Uh, we also see within a charismatic leader the propensity to take personal risk. Uh, uh, high personal risk that can incur high cost and uh, we also see the leaders uh, to
to be engaged, the Kashmiric leaders to be engaged in self-sacrifice to achieve such vision. And uh, we also see that uh, the leaders uh, who are per uh, perceptive uh, to others' abilities and responsive to their needs and feelings, they, they can be identified as charismatic leaders. And definitely, there are some X factors about them. They have some unconventional behavior traits within them, which, which stands them out, which actually puts them in a, in a different stage in comparison with others. Then the question um, that we always ask, uh, that has been always asked in the industry is, can we produce charismatic leaders or is it something that is natural? Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a natural X factor and that cannot be reproduced in the labs or in the, in the training fields. Uh, but the, the studies have shown that there are certain traits and uh, in many cases uh, so some individuals are born with charismatic traits but at the same time others uh, can be trained to exhibit such uh, traits or behaviors. Um, definitely, whoever, however way we do it, uh, we see that this aura of charisma, uh, of maintaining this optimistic view, this passion as a catalyst to generate a lot of enthusiasm, to communicate with others effectively, those always need to be there. And uh, it always, a charismatic person, a leader, creates a bond that inspires others to follow. That, that is always there. Uh, and that something definitely can have positive impact uh, in the organization or the society at large. Charismatic leaders influence followers by, as we talked about, articulating um, their vision. Uh, uh, the statements are very, very um, crisp to the point. Um, it hits the uh, hits the court it it talks about the real things the values that the people are standing for um, we in our lifetime we have seen or we can see different examples of charismatic leaders Martin Luther King jr. Uh, he was an amazing charismatic leader who changed uh, which who changed the perception um, um, uh, in terms of uh, the movement uh, with the civil rights and uh, liberty and and definitely uh, led so many millions and definitely inspired till inspiring millions of people around the world not just in USA and then of course in the tech world we have Steve Jobs um, in many cases uh, we, we see the different uh, gadgets uh, produced by Steve Jobs uh, company Apple are not the ones who they originally invented but they were the one who packaged it in a right way uh, and uh, uh, captured the market in a most effective way thanks to the vision and thanks to the uh, inspiring capability of uh, Steve Jobs uh, who, who has been definitely who stood apart from the other tech leaders um, um, in his uh, during his time and uh, definitely uh, the question that the book pose poses that um, does effective charismatic leaders depend on situation yes they do and uh, they are very much uh, efficient uh, to get the best out of it uh, uh, in order to um, inspire people in order to motivate people to go to a certain direction to achieve some vision uh, to achieve some goal uh, to fulfill some vision definitely uh, they uh, in many cases get the best uh, they can from uh, the situation the present situation saying all this definitely charismatic leaders are not always good for the societies uh, many cases we have seen leaders have allowed their personal goals to override the goals of the organization and we also saw that the charismatic leadership has uh, misguided um, the people who are following them blindly um, one of the most infamous examples of a charismatic leader with bad, bad influence uh, is uh, Adolf Hitler, who inspired the na uh, a nation uh, of Germany 
but at the same time for all the wrong reasons and uh, instigated so much of hatred and so much of uh, bloodshed um, which uh, definitely affected all over the world so we definitely need to be make sure definitely need to make sure that uh, when we talk about charismatic leadership and we see those traits uh, in the leaders in our organization uh, we need to be beware of the dark side so one thing is charismatic leaders their x factors their passion and their way of inspiring people in the other we are we the book talks about transformational leadership and now in the next few slides we will see how these two actually uh, can be compared and can be contrasted uh, in this exhibit um, 12.4 we are talking about transactional leaders who uh, which uh, could uh, which were uh, which can be classified from uh, the other uh, trait theories and uh, with the fiddler's model the path goal theory uh, and the leadership uh, leader per, uh, participation model and these talks about uh, uh, leaders who are inspiring engaging with the with their workforce uh, in a reward system who are managing with certain structure and they are also looking uh, to divide different um, responsibilities among uh, among uh, uh, his or her workforce um, so it's it's going on in a traditional way um, uh, the people perform they're getting rewards and in many cases leaders are uh, to some extent um, uh, using the managers uh, managerial role there now that's transactional leaders now when we talk about transform uh, transformational leader that's beyond that we are here talking about leaders who are providing vision sense of mission instilling pride and also they're respected by others and at the same time uh, they are stimulating the intellect of the workforce uh, they're inspiring uh, to have better motivation to have better output better production and also they are provide they are providing personal attention to the workforce um, they're attached with so how it works one of the key things of being a transformational leader is uh, first and foremost he or she has to be creative but that creativity does not just stop with him or her uh, it uh, is also engaging that creativity is also being dissipated uh, among uh, the followers among the people who are working with him and everybody is inspired to be more creative so here definitely we see the decentralization of responsibility which we may not see in charismatic leadership we also see the propensity to take risk which is a similarity with charismatic leadership and we also uh, what we see here that the transformational leadership uh, wants to transform the organization for better um, for good purposes and um, that's why the task that uh, he or she take uh, take into hand and implement it's a uh, gear towards the long-term results uh, towards long-term strategies and uh, what we have seen is uh, uh, in the successful organizations um, the upper management are always uh, agreeing with the transformation leaders towards achieving those organizational go organizations goals when we evaluate transformational transformational leadership what we will see is it's not always successful when uh, we are talking about all kind of uh, uh, organizations for different organization different types of leadership is necessary and uh, but this uh, transformational leadership is not a silver bullet and one size fits all uh, depending on the context depending on the size of the company different uh, depending on the services the company is providing uh, the and uh, the cultural context where the company is residing those are very important uh, uh, issues factors to consider uh, when we are evaluating transformational leadership 
then again we are citing globe study in this book where the study about uh, researching 1800 leaders from uh, 825 organizations in 62 countries what it shows is that this study uh, actually in many cases is uh, is conflicting with the traditional contingency and other trait uh, related views what it says is uh, it really does not matter uh, in terms of the differences in cultures in differences in uh, the context different in different uh, socio-political nuances there are according to this globe study there are universe certain universal elements uh, uh, in terms uh, in the shape of vision foresight providing encouragement trustworthiness dynamism which will work no matter where you go and the leaders the successful leaders always need to have those traits so that's the finding of the globe study and when we talk about these global traits when we talk about these universal traits one of the one of the important thing that is always there but lately is under a lot of uh, focus is ethics and trust in leadership and that that is crucial more and more um, in our organizational behavior we see that uh, um, in different organizations uh, businesses people are talking about social responsibilities uh, is beyond corporate social responsibilities we are also talking about social businesses our commitment to the society sustainable strategies uh, friendly strategies greener strategies uh, that can uh, just not ensure profit making but also a better uh, inclusive growth with the society where the organization belongs to and all these depends um, on the ethical leadership uh, to, to some extent um, so who are the ethical leaders who are um, wh where how can we make sure a person uh, who is in the leadership is uh, ethical uh, a big part uh, comes uh, in the explanation as uh, authentic leadership uh, so when we talk about authentic leadership we are talking about people where we are putting a lot of trust and they have they are running their actions they're running their functions and the companies uh, with the sense of justice uh, and uh, respecting the trust of the people who are working with them and also the trust of the customers who are getting the services from them so that's uh, one of the critical criteria of authentic leaders with uh, this slide in many uh, ways uh, talks about the things we just explained uh, uh, in summary ethical leadership uh, touches the leadership uh, in um, in terms of uh, high ethical standards uh, in just not their own behavior but also encouraging others to uh, ensure integrity and uh, the end goal what we are trying to say is to ensure socialized uh, ethical charismatic leadership that uh, can uh, that can go beyond the traditional means and and uh, can work towards ensuring a better society one of the uh, definite when we are defining uh, authentic leadership under under uh, the ethical behavior one of the criteria that come is the servant leadership according to the book the servant leaders go beyond their self-interest and instead focus on different opportunities to help the followers or, or the people who are working under him uh, at the same time uh, the characteristics uh, they're talking about is uh, just not um, in listening to them in addition to listening to them they're actively persuading uh, the different uh, issues uh, related to the problems uh, they found by listening to the uh, workers or listening to the workforce the followers and uh, uh, by doing this uh, they are also building this uh, stewardship they're they're building this uh, personal relationship uh, in order to gain a long-term benefit out of that uh, working contract And those behavior, what we just talked about, 
in the previous slides entails and results in trust and trust is one of the key things we also talked about it uh, when we started explaining ethics uh, or ethical leadership so trust is a psych uh, psychological state that exists when uh, one agrees to make uh, oneself vulnerable to another because uh, the one has positive expectations about how things are going to turn out so we are opening up ourselves uh, putting down our uh, like having our guards low so that uh, we can have better interaction with others uh, because we think that something positive will come out of that relationship uh, and that's that's very important that's very that's very sensitive uh, and this is where leadership uh, can be be more successful if they can ensure uh, that they have the trust of the people who are following them unfortunately when the trust is broken uh, it can definitely have serious adverse effects on the group's performance not only just group's performance on individual's performance and it can have a negative snowball effect on the whole organization this um, exhibit 12.6 talks about the nature of trust uh, here not only we are looking into the trustworthiness of the leader which is uh, explained um, with different criteria as integrity benevolence ability uh, uh, in terms of understanding others and also ability in terms of professional ideas uh, also people's propensity the followers propensity to trust somebody and, and together uh, that results in the trust and then that can help uh, the workforce to uh, achieve risk-taking uh, transparent information sharing effective uh, uh, productive effectiveness in terms of group building and eventually a productive outcome um, so trust is a core issue behind such uh, good and positive uh, initiatives within an organization so the book explains um, this uh, uh, exhibit uh, by saying that trust uh, is a process we focused on the trust uh, trust propensity uh, that uh, that primarily focuses on people's um, willingness to trust the leader and the leaders who break the uh, this uh, psychological contract with workers um, by and demonstrate that they aren't uh, trustworthy then uh, that has this effect that the employees then start becoming less satisfied less committed there will be more absenteeism and withdrawals and we'll see uh, less of uh, uh, of corporate cities uh, corporate citizenship behavior and definitely we that will result in lower platform uh, performance um, this is the thing uh, we talk about consequences of uh, trust we explained that uh, uh, when we were talking about uh, the exhibit with trust and the relationship between leaders and the followers beyond uh, defining and the successes of uh, at the importance of ethical leaders um, the book also talks about um, the importance of uh, uh, mentoring in leadership exhibit 12.7 to some extent uh, summarizes that uh, the practice that happens where the leaders uh, take on uh, some young people the young work uh, from the workforce as their protege and then train them um, in different uh, and expose them to different tasks and uh, see whether or not they are up to those tasks and that's how uh, it's uh, the baton is passed uh, th there is a continuation the whole idea is to have a continuation of certain leadership uh, uh, within an organization or within a, a bigger context so this is uh, an interesting um, practice uh, it also have uh, some uh, um, psychosocial functions uh, in addition to the career function or formal functions uh, uh, the leaders in many ways want to share personal experience with the proteges 
uh, and uh, also the leaders in many ways wanted to be act wanted to act as uh, role models uh, to the greater society um, so this is a very interesting uh, practice that we have seen um, in the professional world so much of the organization's success or failure is due to the factors of outside the influence of leadership so there are so many other external factors to look into not always people uh, the mere people or the leaders can do anything about it so in many cases success and failures of uh, certain organization is about being a right place at the right time or the right place at the wrong time <laughs> so in uh, that can be a matter of luck that can be a matter of so many other external factors so that's why the attribution theory of leadership says leadership is merely an attribution people make about other individuals but that does not mean it can solve everything and, and or ensure success of a company there are other, uh, there are different challenges uh, in the in the present time uh, in ob and uh, in other professional setting if we look into that the leadership is facing one is we always talk about in all our sessions about ob is the issue with uh, the increasing um, uh, number of uh, dispersed community uh, of workforce uh, online uh, workforce uh, in many cases a workforce uh, that has multiple ethnicity multiple um, nationality multiple places and we connect them through technological advancement through skype through different social networks through different kind of telecommunity and there of course leadership is needed and that is online leadership and this is something very new and uh, this has the challenges of not knowing somebody in person or not seeing them in person and hand so how those challenges can be covered uh, can be and uh, can be overcome so th and those things with the advancement of the technology many of those things uh, can um, become easier uh, for example, here in this lecture and the others, uh, I'm not seeing in, main, in most cases uh, the people who are listening to this lecture. Uh, so how we are interacting, there are different prompts that we are using through our online uh, teaching uh, uh, platforms. But at the same time, that does not 100% um, uh, uh, that, 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 that that's not successful in 100% yeah, recreating the real world interaction face to face scenarios uh, uh, so with the most more popularities of uh, the 3d virtual reality uh, and uh, their mesh up with uh, um, the present real world um, uh, high high speed internet network definitely we will see uh, we can see more of that application that can overcome this uh, absence and the gap we have uh, between different persons who are uh, uh, talking through online, uh, interacting through online, and those practices definitely can help uh, overcome some of the challenges that online leadership is facing. Uh, we, we started talking about selecting leaders. We were talking about the, uh, even though we have the right leaders with different factors, things can go wrong. Uh, saying that definitely uh, selecting leaders for a company or an organization at any level for a group or a team uh, is, is, is a critical factor we should always try our best and having a good leader definitely always helps um, uh, so identifying the leadership traits uh, uh, behavioral traits uh, is important so we talked about different personality tests in our previous chapters uh, we also should put them into situation specific uh, ex uh, 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 simulations and to see whether the experiences they bring in are relevant and uh, can can help us uh, to guide to a better place and uh, definitely we all need to be uh, flexible about leadership uh, that you know, with, with the change of time, with the change of need, we, uh, we also should be open towards changing the leadership. Then also, just not selecting somebody, having 
in-house training or external training to groom future leaders uh, who can take charge uh, whenever it's needed. It's 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 very very crucial. Uh, we definitely need to, and there uh, we definitely need to make sure that within our organization there are different uh, different different activities uh, and different facilitation that can help to groom uh, better leaders uh, for the future. Um, that definitely uh, makes uh, uh, the life of the present leadership easier. At the same time, that helps such uh, actions help such groomings help the organization to be better uh, positioned for the future challenges so summing it up definitely there are some critical implications for the managers we we talked about hiring we talked about selection and uh, when we talk about uh, hiring candidates uh, ethics and trustworthiness definitely comes into a huge role to play uh, no matter how efficient a person is to lead a company if he or she is not ethical does not have the sense of justice then definitely he or she cannot lead to a sustainable outcome and finally we need to consider investing in leadership training uh, through formal courses workshops rotating job responsibilities coaching and mentoring um, these are the good ways smart ways to make sure that our organization uh, is in safer hand for a longer period of time that's pretty much it thank you so much for listening and for better uh, examples and in-depth analysis uh, definitely uh, to look into the chapter 12 of this book is going to be important Thank you.